Hi, good evening. It's 10.30 and time for Hold No Bars, the program where you get to see it as you see it. And again, people want to know why the name. Well, we've turned around the uh, words a bit. Normally, it's bar no holds, meaning that um, <coughs> in this program, you can say it as you see it. Barno Holes, I think the origin may have been from wrestling or some match where you would have a contest and literally there are no rules. But we still have to operate with certain rules here. Tonight, however, on Hold No Bars, I want to deal with the issue of foreigners working without proper documentation in Guyana. And... Um, what has become prominent over two years now, the Honorable Gail Teixeira had raised the issue in the Parliamentary um, Sectoral Committee on, I think it was Foreign Affairs. When she raised the issue of the number of Cubans coming to Guyana and not leaving and at that time the issue was about 93,000 arrivals and 70 odd departures so about 16 20,000 persons could not be accounted for and that was about two years ago since then not only have we seen the issue of Cubans we have the issue of Venezuelans, and we have the he issue of Haitians and Nigerians. And while Ghana is a small country and we will have to increase our population significantly, significantly, if we have to have certain critical economic, a certain critical economic mass in our country. But many small countries do that because they have tourism, so the population is double because of visitors at any one time. And oil-rich countries, for example, in the Middle East, their population is three, four times what it is. Population meaning people living in the country uh, is many times more than the actual population of that country because of the migrant workers migrant workers and so I don't doubt that Guyana may be sooner rather than later in a position where we're going to have quite a bit of migrant workers the difference between a migrant worker and an illegal foreigner working in Guyana is like day and night and so I want to raise this issue because as we approach the next general and regional elections, the issue of uh, illegal persons in Guyana and being absorbed in, assimilated in, melting into the population becomes very significant, right? And um, it's worrying because the issue is going to be fake citizenship papers could come up or even properly obtained citizenship birth certificates could come up and um, what will happen is that we can see some changes to the democratic changes to the democratic demographic makeup and democratic I should say makeup of our country and what has been even more concerning is the opening up of our borders to Haitians and Nigerians now one particular person who frequents every day the airport and is in the provision of translation 
and transportation services to the Spanish population, be it Venezuelans or Cubans. And the person said to me that on COPA, they are in excess of a hundred Haitians arriving every day on the COPA flight. And so we asked the question, where are these persons heading to? And I saw in Kaicho News, 8,000 odd Haitians have arrived in the past six, seven months. And there isn't a corresponding in set of information showing that there have been this kind of um, departures by this particular set of people. Now, uh, so someone is messaging me, messaging me um, here about that right now, and I'll read that shortly. But bear with me, bear with me for about 10 minutes because this is extremely important. Extremely important, especially if, especially if there is a systematic approach of the arrival of foreigners into Guyana and them being given um, some form of documentation to make them eligible to work and we don't know what else could happen. So this is extremely important. Uh, so you have 100 odd Haitians coming. So while it was 8,600 over the past six, seven months, it has, the rate of arrival has skyrocketed. Now, as I said, we have to, we will have to have a larger population. Whether that population be persons we've invited to come legally as economic citizens or other, there is, or migrant worker, this has to be tackled frontally as guidance. Very concerning, very, very, very concerning, All right? There is a post by uh, Roshan Khan. I don't know, uh, let me just check and see um, if it's senior or junior. I can't make out the picture. But a post on social media says, something strange with Haitians. I was approached to provide employment. And while illegal, their agent leaders say they will soon get legal documents as citizens. And Mr. Roshan Khan, Dr. Haji Roshan Khan, is a person who um, is an upstanding citizen of our country. And he's making this post um, just recently. It says, some are Haitians, but do not have Haitian passport, right? But only Venezuelan ones are Panamanian passports. Obviously, illegal passports are acquired illegally. Then they have connections to get papers to live in Guyana and vote. I think this is serious. As a people, we Guyanese could be wiped out. Now, I'm assuming here this is Dr. Roshan Khan uh, making this post, right? 8,600 Haitians in the last seven months. That's just the last seven months. But as I've said, it's an increase in the rate of arrival of Haitians. Now, so this is um, one of the posts which um, I've seen and um, Yeah, so we have this phenomenon in the country, but it is not only a post from Roshan Khan. Over the past two weeks, more persons have approached me saying that this is happening here and there. Let's take just to my right the east bank of the Demerara River, the fishing sector, quite a few persons are employed 
Haitian persons are employed in that industry. And I approached one operator and he said, the persons have documents, they have work permits. Uh, he can't tell if the document is fake or not, but they came with documentation. Uh, he said also that there is, he has a concern and he now is going to have some reservations with respect to the hiring. He said that, look, not only do they have documentation, but they have representation. And this is the representation which they're speaking about. They said that, he said that there was an issue with one worker and uh, that he was, um, he called a worker in and was speaking to them. They don't know a lot of English, but within an hour, someone showed up at his business and said he's here to represent the Haitian workers and he wanted to find out what is the issue, what is happening, and more particularly, why are these questioning of the workers? That they're here legally, they have rights, and that he is there to ensure that their rights are honored and that they are protected. Almost like a mafioso type of operation. So the person backed off a bit because he says um, he was taken by complete surprise. Two nights ago, I was in this vicinity at a very nice function and I had an opportunity to converse with a number of uh, business persons who I didn't see for a little while. And um, one person says, said to me, I have three Haitians who literally just walked off the uh, road and came looking for employment. And um, they had documents. And I said to the person, I said, hey, you have to be careful, you know. As far as I know, the legal process is to get a work permit, you have to be assigned to a company and you just can't use that permit and move from job to job. We don't give blank work permits. We don't give blank work permits. We give a work permit particular to a job. And work permits are expensive. They're 12, 1500 US dollars, right? To get, depending on the category. Haitians, Nigerians, and um, possibly, I'm saying here, possibly Venezuelans do not have a legal right like other CARICOM citizens to work, live and work in Guyana. Most Caribbean CARICOM countries, we have the free movement of nationals, but there is a process. You get the skill certificate, if your skill is one of the skills that is within the treaty, let's say nurses, uh, teachers, engineer, university graduates, I think it's down to domestics now. And then you still have to get a formal um, CARICOM certificate from your host country. And with that, you still have to get a work permit in the host country. So they're different. They're different. And um, work permits are not transformed. You can't use them like a passport and go to any country. Right? They're more like a, uh, you have to have a visa issued by the country to go to that particular country. The work permit is specific to a company and a job, particular. So it becomes very worrying. The PBPC has raised this issue and continues to raise it. And then there is the other consideration. And we saw this blow up in the newspapers. Senior government officials are saying, so what's wrong? 
If the foreigners are willing to cut grass for $1,000 and our people want $1,500, then the foreigners will get the work. No, sirs, the foreigners can't get the work because the foreigners have to have permission to work in our country. Today, I just had a conversation with work-study students and the 12,000 young people who will be coming out officially officially who will be coming out of school after CXC results uh, are declared this month they all be looking for jobs so two of them have said to me look we prepare just to get experience to come and work even for a stipend of $30,000 a month. So I can't understand government officials talking about Guyanese don't want to work do for certain wages. I can't understand that you have a tremendous amount of Guyanese willing to work, especially young people. Our unemployment rate among women, young women and young males, has risen phenomenally. Jobs are hard to get. So if we have 8,000 Haitians coming here and um, they're getting jobs, something seems wrong. The, this system, I'm saying, in my mind, has to be well organized. You can't move that volume of people without having a structure and a well-oiled network. Just before coming on the program tonight, I met a gentleman, and the gentleman said to me he was heading to Lethem. And on the way to Lethem, they came across a bus that was um, stranded, broke down, and all the passengers were Haitians, right? And he gave me the transport services that is doing them. So I have a name now. I can't say it, right? But if my bus is hired to move a set of people from A to B, then um, I, will, I will provide it, right? So, um, so he said, look, I can tell you there were about 18 persons on this bus. It was jam-packed. Now, I don't know where, where they're heading to or what, but he wanted to, he wanted to let me know because this is becoming a vexing issue, very vexing issue at this time. I know I promised you to take a few minutes, but still, I want you to indulge me. Venezuelans, it's another issue. Because remember, we had somewhere in the vicinity in Puerto Ardaz and some of the closer um, eastern Venezuelan towns, we had close to 60,000 Guyanese family that moved over there. A lot of those persons are here. Their first language, the children of those persons, I should say, are here, back here. The first language is Spanish. You hear them speak, right? They're Spanish. You go to the stores downtown as far away as Ornock Street on Regent Street, you will see a lot of them. So, you gotta be careful. Once you're born of Guyanese parents, right, or you can prove that your grandparent was Guyanese, you are entitled to Guyanese citizenship. So you're gonna have to be very careful with respect to some of the people who are Venezuelans. You go to some places, you have persons very white, name, Hermanita Rampersad. Hermanita, we all know in Spanish, means little sister. But 
that's how some of the names are registered, you know. So we have to be watchful at this time for two reasons. One, it's jobs, and it's very, I think, in terms of the comments being made by senior government officials at this time, it's very irresponsible of them to say that, well, if Guyanese will do the work, other people will come and do it. If we want other people to come and do the work that Guyanese will not be doing or are not doing, let us bring them in properly and give them certain status. They know their status. One, is good for them. They can't be exploited by anybody. Two, if it's a mafioso network that's trafficking them, then we have to nip that in the bud. We don't want Guyanese to be seen as a country that's condoning trafficking or is a trafficking destination or a conduit for trafficking. And thirdly, if these people um, want to come and work and we have the demand, let us give them the papers so that their labor rights will be honored, will be honored. And this now needs a national conversation on it, not for it to be done hiddenly and sec or secretly, for a national conversation, manpower surveys being done, projections on human resource development and the employment of our human resource in Guyana, projections with respect to, and why we didn't, we have done it, that's why we had all these training people for out of school, youths and so forth. We're not perfect, but certainly it wasn't a free for all. And with this, let me open up the lines for your comments. First, I have a few um, email messages to read. One, um, this person says, yes, they are working illegally and they are working cheap. So it poses a problem for us. We used to get $500 a day construction work. Now Valenzuela is working for three, five. So when we go for work anywhere, the bosses tell us you take three, five, or leave it. So we, are, those bosses and those employers will have to know this is illegal. I don't want to see us becoming um, like a Trump state that we will have more illegal migrant workers than our population, and then it's a bigger problem. So this thing has to be nipped in the bud. So thank you for sending that um, comment there. Uh, the other one, good night, Mr. Nare. Thanks for the compliment. Keep up the good work. Great. Okay, so we open the phones now. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Go ahead. Okay, that person was a little bit impatient. They couldn't wait long enough. The cell phone lines are also open. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Hi. Good evening. <laughs> Yes. So that's the question. And uh, we're going to have to have a mechanism of uh, informing, informing authorities, and more particularly informing those who will speak up about the challenges of the illegal uh, immigrants working in our country. Hi, Guyana. Hi, good evening, Nadia. Good evening. Uh, I like I enjoy your program and this is a this issue what you are um, saying is, is a big issue. Yes. From since February I'm not getting no job. What uh, work do you do? I'm a welder. A welder? Yeah. Uh, and uh, other group body other group body work. Mm -hmm. uh, people are doing the wrong thing. They work them more cheap more than anything. Mm -hmm. All right, yes, uh, but this thing is getting out of uh, way out of uh, out of uh, hand. Everybody is just um, saying we got to wait after the election. Mm -hmm. We got to wait after the election to get their job. Mm -hmm. I think the price be crazy, man. I have kids. I got rent to pay. I got bills to pay. Mm -hmm. And we really can use that. The only advice from the president to us is the only job that the president can provide for us right now. Okay. Well, thanks for raising it, right? 
Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Good evening. Let me raise your volume up. Go ahead. Well, good night. I'm watching your program, right? Mm hmm And there's something I want to know. This government here, I guess there's no credit whatsoever for the knocking of that. Mm hmm And I think this is very unfair. Mm hmm I could remember when the rain was about, this whole country was a flood of people. Mm hmm And all them people going with your street. the issue that we're raising tonight? Well, I just saw on the TV, but everything is just one, this one. The both parties are the whole thing. Both parties are not perfect. Okay. There's a lot of corruption of mortars and killing. What about that? Mm -hmm. A lot of unsolved mortars in the evil south. Mm -hmm. And here, 23 years in Africa. Mm -hmm. This government is being criminal in the evil south. Mm -hmm. They put in cameras all over the place. It's time now, this is a issue, and Lady Guy needs to make the choice. Okay. Okay, I know about propaganda, but I know we all want the Guyanese people to have a say and make their choice. And that is why we're saying, hey, since March the 21st, we should have had local, sorry, general and regional elections. Uh, those who I haven't been able to take the calls, you have to bear with us because we just opened the lines. Hi, good evening. You're on the good air. Evening. Good evening, sweetheart. Good night. Good evening. I'm just going to find out if the election is the 18th of September. Uh, no, I think that matter was well ventilated this afternoon in the courts mm -hmm. where this challenge to the house to house registration had come up. I was speaking with one of the lawyers before, before I came on the program and. Mm -hmm. um, this, but this you don't think that is unfair, the guy in his people? About what? The election should be happened on the 18th of September. I think it's unfair for the Guyanese people to have to wait yeah. so long because it should yeah. have happened three months after December 21st. So you don't know when they will get half election? Well, I'm, I'm reserving my comments. I'm biting my thumb. As, as far as I am concerned, yeah, After. but that's terrible, yeah? That's because, you know, the, you know, that, that, to me, like, you know, sometimes you just pack your bag and just fly out another country. Because why I say that? Because to see, you know, they're not going in the law. They're not going through the law, you know. Mm -hmm. And I hear Ranger say yesterday something which I... You said Ranger you know, or Granger? <laughs> huh? The, the government okay. president. He said something which I won't even say because... For a president like him to say something like that, he should listen to his thoughts, you know. Mm -hmm. and if I belong to him, you know, they gotta yeah. come to me. Oh, you can say something like that, you know. So many, so many government corrupt. Are the people in, in the government corrupt? Look, Britain didn't have elections for a little while. Uh -huh. They had a referendum called Brexit. Brexit, yeah. David Cameron at the time, when the referendum results came out, by the thinness of margin, the British people voted to leave the European Union. David Cameron, who was and is pro-European Union, right? He yeah. said, I consider this a referendum on my leadership and I hereby tender my resignation. <laughs> he left. Yeah. Theresa May came on the scene. Theresa May came on the scene with a mandate to take okay. Britain out of the European Union. Mm -hmm. She failed to do that. She, like some politicians in Guyana, mm -hmm. still wanted to hold on to power. What happened? Her own party voted against her. And <laughs> she had I to say, you. she I had to you. say. But if you yes. don't have nothing to fear, you should have the election. Amen. Simple. I mean, okay, darling, have a blessed evening. You eh? too, sweetheart. 
Keep it a good work, darling. Thank you. Hi, good evening. You're on the Hi, air. Hi, Mr. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I have noticed on social media, and I've heard people saying that Chinese are coming here, Indian nationals are coming here. Mm -hmm. so what happened to the Asians? Mm -hmm. What they don't understand, these Chinese and these Indian came, they came a created business, a created employment for persons. Mm -hmm. Now the Asians are coming here for employment. Mm -hmm. What happened to our, our local people who are seeking employment? Mm -hmm. It's very unfair. Any country you will go to America, they, they give their citizens first employment and then all the people afterwards. Mm -hmm. And that should happen to Guyanese. Thank I, you. Hold on. Before you go, I just want to raise one issue. I don't know how many Chinese and how many Indians create uh -huh. business, but we do have quite a few of them legally here. The children born here, they continue business here. But I remember we used to arrest them even under our government. Those who overstayed, we deport them. It still happens now. And, but I remember one magistrate saying to an Indian national, why are you coming here? Why don't you stay in India and, and do your farming? But those people that came here, they have their businesses and they are creating employment for people. Most of the time they're not looking for employment, they're creating employment. Thank Th you. Thanks. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Go ahead. No line. Good evening. You're on the air. Hold no bars. Good evening, sir. How are you? Quite well. And yourself? Mr. Nader, um, I, I, I don't know what um, the court case and the Jacob chairman clashing together. No, the GCOM chairman issue is resolved. Resolved. We have but a new um, chairperson of GCOM. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, what, what I mean is that um, I think these two heads, one has to say something before the other one. Okay. I think you're referring to the current matter. In, in the high court. In the high court, right? Well, as far as I understand, today the parties met before her worship. Chief Justice Acting, Ruxin, right? George uh -huh. Wiltshire. And the, the matter was heard, I think, starting from 1.30. As far as I know, arguments went on till after 5. Right? So let's... I have, I have a good brief on uh, as to what transpired in court from all sides. Anil, the exchange between Anil and the Chief Justice, the exchange between Royce Dale and the Chief Justice. And so I have a good understanding. It will take us. And that was for. This matter will be resolved Monday? I don't think Monday, but matter hearing, the hearing will continue. And I think no, sides. A, a lot of times I heard on the news, it seems to me like Carl Gill is disappointed with the present government decision that this election will not be held on September the 18th. Anybody from the coalition government who people tell me are disappointed, I said they're fooling you because if I so love democracy and I love to see my country move forward as a democratic nation, I would stand up and speak out. If President Irfan Ali does something which I don't agree on in principle, I will stand up and speak out. Okay? okay. Good. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Hold no bars. Good, good evening. Good evening. You have to speak up a bit because we don't have the desk mic. We're dealing with an overhead mic, so if you speak a little. Okay, I'm I'm getting a little trouble uh, hearing that caller, so uh, my apologies. Let's take another one. Hi, good evening. You're on. Hi, good evening, Mr. Nadir. Good evening. You look very good tonight. Thank you, sir. And I think you're the most independent politician. This country, yeah. I don't consider myself, I consider myself a retired politician. No, I, I mean politically, I think you, you could be a person that could make a very independent decision regarding the political parties. Well, thank you for that vote of confidence. Anyway, I want to talk about the Haitians. Go ahead. All right? I don't think people get in a, the, the point. Africans here, Nigerians, all partners of African people here, mm -hmm. there was never an issue raised with them. Mm -hmm. But the point is, I mean, the, the, the problem is with the Haitians. Mm -hmm. The volume of Haitians that arrived here mm -hmm. in that time period, yeah. that is where the problem lies. Okay. You understand? Mm -hmm. And I don't think these Haitians are visibly in this country for that amount of, of, of people that come here. I think they are traveling to some other country. Mm -hmm. Remember? 
Cayenne is a French country, you know. Mm -hmm. The Haitians are French. Mm -hmm. Possibility they're going to Cayenne. Mm -hmm. Anyway, this is just for the Haitians. I want to go to the Constitution. Go ahead. If the president and the, his government is in a caretaker mode, mm -hmm. right? Should he, should he not have a caretaker status as a president? Yes. Why should he have the executive status still? Mm -hmm. He's not appointed as a normal president under this 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 uh, dispensation. Mm -hmm. He should have that executive power removed from him. Mm -hmm. Right? And my, my third point. Mm -hmm. I heard somebody say Mr. Ramchitan was saying the Constitution is fiction. Mm -hmm. If the Constitution is a fiction, mm -hmm. right, Mr. Ramchitan mm -hmm. would fool you mm -hmm. as a minister and his powers as a minister becomes mm -hmm. a figment. Mm -hmm. It doesn't exist mm -hmm. if the Constitution is a fiction. Well, I can't fault your reasoning, sir. Okay, that's that's But I want to say something, and um, it was part of my uh, the information I wanted to sp um, put out this evening. We have seen before in the Caribbean an attempt to rebalance population demographics. There was an issue when Eric Williams, the f late Prime Minister of Trinidad, um, was worried about the population demographics. And at that time, I think it may have been 50, 60 years ago, the issue was bringing in Grenadians. And Grenadians were coming into Trinidad, in particular, not so much Tobago, but Trinidad, in numbers. And I remember it's sometime around the early 70s, on a visit to Trinidad, one of my friends was showing me a hill as we were going down from Port of Spain. And he said, that's the Grenadian hill. And the, the government brought in a lot of Grenadians to help rebalance the population demographics. Maybe something like that could be on the cards here. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Hi. Good evening. Um, you have a lot of good points tonight. Thank you. Um, one, I have two. One is like when you turn and I like people see, right? Is that so much experience put into too much to educate the children And when they have come out and write and see it, it's all available to them. That's one. And the second is about the Haiti people. They come in the country, they tell the Haitian and the Haitian and the Haiti. Freedom. Is this them coming out for freedom or work? Is this where the human rights are? Is this human rights in a country that exists anymore? see that they get help. Even though they're coming out of the country, they work for a better salary, they get help. But there is human rights. Uh, they don't be saying things like freedom, which we celebrate just three months recently. Mm -hmm. You know, I need mean, something more on that. They come into the country, we celebrate three months recently, yesterday. They go work for what? Like little or nothing, like slavery again. Is it we really free? Is it the question is we ask if the guy needs free? Mm hmm The answer is we free the service in the But are we free? Well, that's a good question. Emancipation, I think Bob Marley wrote well of it, right? Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot. Well 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 raised mm -hmm. your concerns. Thanks a lot. Okay. So we're again opening the lines. Hi, good evening. Hi, good evening, Manzur. Good evening. I think the Asian are coming for vote. They, they, they want the house now to give them ID card for vote. Mm -hmm. I said the PPP are really looking to it. Mm -hmm. Because it wouldn't be a fair election. Well, well, Thank you. okay, thanks a lot. The only thing I can say to that is all of us got to look into it because um, the Haitians will have a certain accent. And I said last week, you have to remember two a word or a few words. Gasso, meaning man. They respond to gasso. Sakafet, gasso. So when you want to say, you know, if you use that among certain, um, at certain times, people who you might feel doubtful, you can throw it in, you might get a response, then you will know. 
is not a person who was born and raised here, perhaps. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Hold no bars. Go ahead. Okay, that person going to be. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Good Go, go ahead. Okay, hi, good evening. You're on the air. Okay, so um, I don't have any way of blocking that person, but he has a right to call me whatever name he wants, except don't do it on the television because the people who operate the station will be hauled before the Guyana National Broadcasting Authority, right? Hi, good evening. You're on the... Hi, Mr. Trinidad. Go ahead. How are you doing? Quite well this evening. And yourself? I am here um, listening to all the lawlessness going on in Guyana. And it seems like it's out of some of us hands to do something about it. Mm -hmm. Tell me something. How long does an immigrant have to be here before they become a citizen? I... I don't know the fine details of the law, but I understand the law to be, if you marry a Guyanese, mm -hmm. you can apply for citizenship tomorrow, right? Okay. If you are a citizen of the Commonwealth, and the Commonwealth is defined as all those countries who, uh, which were under the Queen's rule or still are under the Queen's rule. If you are a citizen of the Commonwealth and you live legally in this country for one year, you're okay. entitled to be registered, have an ID card, and once you're 18 years of age, you are entitled to vote, right? So that's a category. And then the, the other issue is um, if you arrive in Guyana, and you live here legally for seven years. Okay. So you have to live legally for seven years. Then you can apply for citizenship. It doesn't say that you will be automatically granted, but you can apply. And of course, you'll have to get all the references, testimonial for your neighbor. Like I have a neighbor who was here, and every year we'd go in, he would get a renewal of his application to live in Guyana. And after seven years, he got a testimonial from a neighbor that yes, he's lived here and he's a good um, neighbor and things like that. And he eventually got the citizenship. Um, uh, it seems like someone is on a stealth mission. We need to be um, thorough in exposing what's mm -hmm. happening. Um, I th we have to be concerned that they are not on the voters list because they tried to um, to register my 13 year old great nephew last week. Uh, 13 illegal. Yes. Yeah. No, but here, if they, let's say they set the qualifying date as December 31st, 2019, and he's going to be 14 years from now to then, then. He could be registered. I am. I'm not sure, um, okay. but I know he's 13. Okay, good. So he yeah. may be 14. Um, up yeah, to I heard President Granger said that whoever wants to get rich mm -hmm. with the oil money, they would have to go through him. Mm -hmm. So maybe he knows what operation he has going on. Mm -hmm. I flipped today when I heard Mr. Jordan saying he preferred to give the the, the, the immigrants. The cheaper uh, paying jobs. I, I won't call them immigrants, the illegal immigrants. Yes, illegal immigrants. Mm. I mean, how did these people get into the position of making decisions for this country? Mm -hmm. They don't have a brain in their head. Thank you very much. Let's get, let's get a couple of other callers coming through, right? I mean, hello, good evening. You're on the air. Hi, good evening, sir. Good evening. If these immigrants, illegal immigrants, come into this country, right, and they work for a cheaper wage, mm -hmm. does that give them the right to deny Guyanese and citizens of this country the right? The the right to work the job. Mm -hmm. They have a preference over the Guyanese mm -hmm. because they are working for a, a lower wage. Mm -hmm. and that's my question to the minister, the minister of finance. Thanks, that. Thanks. 
All I would say is if employers want to hire these persons, there is a process. You have now, if they have a work permit and they were working with someone and they come to you, then you have to now adopt them in the sense that you have to take them in, you have to make an application. As far as I know, if you came as a visitor and you want to have a work permit, you have to leave the country and come back in through one of our legal ports. That I understand is the system, right? So we have to be a bit careful. Hi, good evening. Hold no bars. You're on the air with the uh, last 10 good minutes. Good evening, how are you doing? Why do you tell me that this job knows and tell the Ghanaians people the truth, you know? Tell me why the PPP don't want to house to um, registration. Mm -hmm. Okay, we dealt with house to house for quite a bit, and I'll come back to that next week, right? So today we're talking about the other phenomenon. But the issue is that a house to house registration according to the timetable of GCOM will take 290 days and even that will mean that the elections will be held probably in 2021. That's not fair to the people of this country. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Hold no bars. You're on the air. Good evening. I can't wait to you again. Clearing all the lines now. Um, what's up messages? Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Okay, so we have a couple of persons who want to tie up the lines for whatever reason. So now I've cleared all the lines. We have the WhatsApp messages. We have the 681 number and the two other numbers. So we deal with the issue of house to house registration. It's engaging the attention of the Chief Justice at this moment. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Okay. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Okay, good night. I'd like to make a contribution, man. Go ahead. I want to I want know why they don't want house house registration. Mm -hmm. Because if they don't get house house registration, no future distance franchise from getting the chance to vote. Mm -hmm. It's not nothing but a new confidence motion. Mm -hmm. It's that every guy is tight to vote. Mm -hmm. That's true. Right. And as long as they got the age. Mm -hmm. And if they stop the house house registration, no guy is an disenfranchise. No children, no young guy not get the phone. Wrong I assumption. You know, in the, in, the com in the computer language, you say garbage in, garbage out. Guy go. And you have made a couple of assumptions which are inaccurate. A claims and objections period will allow anyone and everyone who is not on the current list of national registrants to go on. So you don't need a house to house registration for that. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. Good. So we clear the lines. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Go, all right. go ahead. Okay. So all the lines are cleared again. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Hi, good evening, Mr. Not here. Good evening. Sorry about cutting you off just now, but I had two calls. First, I must say that the house house registration, mm -hmm. I think, I think that is supposed to happen at this present moment mm -hmm. because of the time frame of the election coming down to, to, to the time, mm -hmm. the 90 days. Mm -hmm. But I don't know there is some some kind of some kind of bad business going on because people who are supposed to vote want to vote, mm -hmm. and um, I can see that the I got to tell the foreigners they come and get a job here. Mm -hmm. And the president promised the young people in this country mm -hmm. job, but you will create employment for the young for the young generation. Mm -hmm. For the young generation, get the foreigners and come and get it. The people who come and get the overnight in this country, they get any job. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what you will do with the young people coming out from school in time to come. Okay, Paul. Thanks a lot. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. We just have about eight minutes remaining. Go ahead. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Hi, uh, yes, listen, good evening to you, Mr. And, and to you, too. Well, um, the, the hot topic is the illegal immigrants in the country. Right. Um, this is something that I've been showing great emphasis on from since the beginning. Ever mm -hmm. since it had this... Ministry of Immigration, I knew that there was a recipe for some big thing to come, and mm -hmm. it actually came to pass. Mm -hmm. And the architects 
of this operation are those in that same Ministry of Immigration. Mm -hmm. Right? Now, this influx of these Haitians, right, they have really put a lot of people out to work because I can tell you because I'm part of it. You see, within the work field, right, mm -hmm. when these Haitians come, mm -hmm. right, they, they work for next to nothing. Mm -hmm. And employers are happy to mm -hmm. employ them. Mm -hmm. Because they will not have to pay our Guyanese the, the right rate, mm -hmm. but you have to pay them. Mm -hmm. And there isn't anything within the working world that you can do. There's no ministry of labor you can go to. Mm -hmm. There isn't anything that you can do about it. Well, I don't agree with you. There's a ministry yeah, of is, labor. Right? But yeah. as I can tell you, I'm the small man. We mm -hmm. are the small people that work. Mm -hmm. We are within the system that knows it, that feels it. We right. are not the rich people or we are like uh, below middle class. But I'll, I'll say to every employer who hires an illegal immigrant without applying for them to get a proper work permit, yeah. that is an unscrupulous employer. Yeah, I know that, right? We all know that. However... And I know some of my you, friends will be really I upset with me. I said that nothing ever comes out of it. Is mm -hmm. either you work or you don't work. And they have taken up a lot of jobs because mm -hmm. currently a number of us aren't working because of these Venezuelans, these Haitians and so on, because they take up the skill level work. Some of them doing masonry work, carpentry work. Well, the going rate for somebody within the masonry carpentry skill work is anything like six thousand five hundred and seven thousand dollars a day. Mm -hmm. These guys they come and they work for anything like three, five to four thousand mm -hmm. dollars. We understand okay things are hard in their country and whatever the case may be. However, within our country all the Guyanese, we ourselves have our own issues to deal with and our own don't look after us. They're just looking to, you know. Thanks a lot. Uh, let me take a few more callers. We have five minutes remaining on the program tonight. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Go ahead. Hi. Good evening. I don't know if we have a human rights function in the country right now. Okay, we do have human rights. Um, might not necessarily be a human rights issue. Um, if if we want to make it a refugee issue is another story. And I don't know Haiti is a country that has been, like, say, certified to have refugees, right? Mm -hmm. But take, so let's get a few callers more. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Good evening, Mr. Nadia. Go ahead. Um, some government office. Mm -hmm. My friends of Asia may be working here very soon. Don't speculate. Okay. Yes. Very soon. Okay. Especially NIS on breakdown. Okay, thanks. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Hello. Good evening. You're on the air. Yeah, um, that's a we got to be careful with the Venezuelan issue, right? Because a lot of the Venezuelans are Guyanese, right? A lot of them, so we have to be very careful in that regard. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Okay, I'm trying to get through the calls as fast as I can because we only have three minutes remaining. Hi, go ahead. Yeah, Mr. Nadir. Go ahead. Good night. Good evening. I hear you was talking something just now, but unfair to guide these people, right? The war, you and your colleagues, you want to do this government with no confidence, most of peace, are and that. We are saying what now? That was a legally passed motion certified by the highest level of courts in our country and within the democratic principles we subscribe to. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Go ahead. You're on the air. Good evening. You're on the air. Hi, good night. Good evening. Um, Miss Mantua, I know you're tired. <laughs> okay, thanks. Um, I know that the uh, sit on television and listen to the problem of the people is the time and it's patient. Uh, uh, thank you for it. Thank you. And, but sometimes the people need to voice their opinion on it. Right. Right, the, people, the, the country has so much opinion, so much problem. And sometimes, to, I think we should do it more in the early time. Early time? Mm. Yeah, because you look so tired and stressed out, and you cannot even answer people in the right fact of mind. I don't have a problem with it, but mm -hmm. you're so tired and stressed out, like, you know? Yeah. Get more energy. Maybe I got just got too old and mm -hmm. I'll be permanently tired. Yeah, get some more energy and come up more on 
Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Great. So, I guess my tiredness is showing even more these days. Hi, good evening. You're on the air. Yeah, my son, I'm here. Go ahead. Good night. How are you doing? Not too bad, as the person You're said. You're going all right? Can't complain well, to you. I just want to say one thing to you, that this government thing I know it. Don't care where we are, pay or where we are, try the thing I know it. Thank you. Stay right there. We are enough for y'all, y'all, and that's it. Okay, thank you very much. The only way this government would not go nowhere is if the election is not held. Right? But we've just arrived at 11.30, the hour that we have to close tonight's program. And on behalf of Kevin, the directors of the television station, on my own behalf, we want to really thank you for sharing all those great comments, observations, and for you having your own opinion. That's democracy. It should be tested in a ballot box. So let's have the elections, Mr. Granger. Thank you very much.